The best and worst thing about the internet is that anyone can give an opinion about anything to everyone. Social media platforms and their limitations have opened up new ways for people to express themselves and so you now have the President of the United States tweeting out his opinion and you can just respond to it. But that doesn't mean that it's going to have a lasting impression. I ran into this problem when I saw a video by TV host Jimmy Kimmel making fun of people who watch other people playing video games. My first reaction to this was, how dare someone on the internet say the thing I liked was stupid. So like thousands of others, I wanted to leave a mean YouTube comment. But I quickly realized that it wouldn't really do anything and, and no one would see it. So I wondered, how could I get my voice out there without already being famous and without having lots of followers? It turns out people do this with video essays. A video essay is basically an essay with narration and video attached to it. And a good video essay can get someone way more views than their subscriber count would suggest. And some of the top channels are getting millions of views on topics ranging from why coffee is good all the way to why Mario might actually be a psychopath. Even large pharmaceutical companies are spending tens of thousands of dollars on a single video essay to promote awareness of certain diseases. I know because some of these have been my clients. So I decided to give it a shot and make a video about why Jimmy Kimmel was wrong and why the thing he likes is kind of stupid instead. Yeah, I know. A little bit petty. But the video quickly got tens of thousands of views and was shared on gaming sites and talked about on multiple subreddits. It definitely wasn't the best video that I've ever made, but it had way more impact than anything that I've ever done on social media. This gave me the confidence to keep on making video essays, and after wasting 127 years of human attention on the niche topic of fighting games, I realized just why the video essay was so much more rewarding than just leaving a mean YouTube comment, and that pretty much anyone can make one. A lot of people know how to write an essay, but not so much about video production. The good news is, it doesn't really take all that much to make a video. If you've ever been to a restaurant with a friend or a date, you might run into what's known as TV at Restaurant Syndrome, aka TARS, where one or both people cannot stop taking glances at the television screen. What's interesting about this is that it happens even though there's no sound on and there's nothing interesting going on the TV. I don't know if this has something to do with the human brain's fight or flight response, but this is great news if you are new to video making because it shows that it really doesn't take that much to grab someone's attention. Video essays like I Hate Everything will actually use unrelated stock footage as filler and jokingly acknowledge it. And of course you have karaoke that has random videos of waterfalls and, and cityscapes that have nothing to do with the song, but you still kind of want them there anyways. Weirdly, just having something to look at can be engaging by itself. But maybe you want to do something more. Maybe you want some fancy infographics or you want to make some cool looking drawings in your video. That stuff really isn't that important either, because you have video essays like CGP Grey who will use stick figures in his videos because he didn't know how to draw, and Video Game Donkey's infographics are no more sophisticated than what you would find in a PowerPoint presentation. 
but both are greatly influential and have great quality. But what they do have in common is that they all know how to capture footage and sound, then rearrange what they've captured, also known as editing, and render everything into a file so that you can upload it. But now you might be thinking, well, I don't have the equipment to do that. The truth is, as long as you have a computer that's not completely ancient, a smartphone, a microphone, and an internet connection, you can make a quality video essay. There's free software for pretty much anything these days, and even professional editing software like DaVinci Resolve that used to cost $1,000 is now free. And of course you have video hosting sites like YouTube, Vimeo, and Vidme, so you never have to worry about bandwidth again. There's really no reason why you can't make a video essay unless, of course, you don't know how to write an essay. Writing is easily the hardest and most important thing to get right in a video essay. Writing essays is something that everyone learns in school, but I never really understood why I had to do them in a certain way. I don't know if I should be saying this here, but in high school, I wrote a lot of terrible, terrible essays. I just knew that my teacher would pass me if I had a thesis, a minimum of sources, and some semblance of structure. But when my audience changed from my teacher to the entire internet, I realized why all that stuff mattered. A bad argument in school might get you a bad grade, but a bad argument on the internet might get you a flurry of insults, hurtful criticism, and sometimes death threats. This might sound like a terrible situation, but YouTube comments and Reddit are actually excellent sources of feedback because they are so unfiltered. If you ask someone in person what they think of your work, they'll likely be bound by their social politeness to not be too honest with you. But the thing about the internet is that it doesn't care about social politeness. So how do you deal with all these hurtful comments and criticisms from so many anonymous people? I like to think of it as having telepathy, like Professor X. Being able to read people's minds will be terrible at first because you hear everyone's perverted thoughts, judgmental criticisms about you, and a whole lot of nonsense, which is precisely what you find in the YouTube comment section. But we all know that telepathy would be extremely valuable for solving problems because we could know what other people were thinking, and that's why it's the superpower of the leader and founder of the X-Men. Thanks to this kind of feedback, I was able to see where my sources were weak or where I wasn't able to convey my idea very clearly. For the first time, I found myself trying to improve my sources and trying to find and use literary devices to express myself better. I learned all this stuff in school, but I didn't know how important it was until I started to write about stuff that deeply mattered to me, no matter how trivial or petty it seemed to other people. My interest in fighting games and video games are often seen as a, a di diversion from school and sometimes contributors to societal violence. But for me, they're the reason why I started to get interested in academic writing and the true value of discussion. The problem with the, the, the mean YouTube comment isn't just that it can be toxic, it's that there's no system of self-improvement and learning. A good video essay can start a massive discussion and inspire people about topics that they never knew that they cared about, and also it's a good way to get your voice out there in a saturated social media landscape. The best filmmaking advice that I ever heard from a, a filmmaker was from director Sam Raimi. He says, get some actors and some basic film equipment and make a short movie over the weekend. Then, 
get a response from an audience and repeat the process by making another short movie the next weekend using that feedback that you gathered. When you make a mean comment on the internet, you might actually be giving somebody else your valuable feedback. Why not make the video and be the one receiving that valuable feedback instead? Thank you very much.